Welcome into another edition of Ask the AD. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, joined by our director of athletics for Miami University, David Saylor, just outside the Gross Center, overlooking Yeager Stadium and the brand new Gunlock Athletic Performance Center. And David, that uh, that building's really coming along. It's really impressive. I yeah. mean, the, every day I see the progress. It's amazing how fast they're working, how hard they're working, and everyone's just excited to get in the building. Yeah, it is indeed, and uh, it is going to be a very exciting time as you come out to the football stadium this summer or this fall and uh, check out the progress of that building football and uh, all of the teams uh, able to move into it probably around January. They're, they're holding true to that That's date. That's right. So, yep. Very good. Well, let's get to your questions. We asked you uh, last week to submit your questions either via Twitter or via Facebook, and uh, we're going to pass those along to David here. Dan Farrell uh, wrote in. He said, is there any chance Miami could fill one of the remaining future schedule non-conference football slots with a Power 5 road game, road game somewhere maybe in the southeast? You know, we're always looking at different places where we have alums and pockets of people. I think scheduling is a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. It really is kind of tricky. And what I would say is that the schools listed in the, in the, in the tweet to us typically don't pay over a million dollars to come play. Right. And that's really where we're locked in. We, if we're going to go play one of those teams, we would like a million dollars at least right. as a minimum. I think that number is going to go up over time. Yeah. There's always inflation. We're getting a million two uh, in 19, a million five in another year going out. So I think as those checks continue to get larger, we're going to try to play schools that can, can pay those. And Wake Forest and some of the schools mentioned don't typically pay those large guarantees. So that's that's part of our jigsaw puzzle in making this thing work. Absolutely. Here we are uh, talking about social media. That's where we get your questions from, whether it's Twitter or Facebook. And Bruce writes in, do you encourage your staff in the athletic department to post on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter? And uh, similarly, do you encourage coaches uh, to do that as well? The short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the long answer is not all of them are as adept at it as others. And so that's something that we talk about a lot as a staff and trying to train all of them to do it at a certain level and try to get better if they're not real comfortable with it. Uh, it's an important piece of where we're going, mm -hmm. certainly in the future. And some of our programs do it exceptionally well. And I think that what we're going to try to do is have those programs maybe work with some of the other ones to see if they can help coach them up or um, try to share pointers, suggestions, those kind of things to try to make everyone at a, at a level that we feel is acceptable in terms of trying to get our messaging out. And, and, and it's really a, a medium that is changing every day and people are trying to learn and trying to keep up and that sort of thing. Yeah, and there's a few few of the things that I don't use that aren't coming out now like Periscope and Snapchat and right. Yik Yak and those other things. I, I don't know what all of them are. You know, I got a few down, yeah. uh, but I, I need to get better too at the ever-changing technology like you said. And it's, it's hard to keep up, but we're trying to get all of our coaches to do it and do it at a level that certainly helps promote our message. The fans out there uh, obviously asking questions about all of our sports. Uh, uh, got a couple of questions coming in about Miami basketball, and we'll use the one from G at Gen City. Uh, what factors are preventing men's basketball from being able to compete in the Mid-American Conference? Well, you know, I just, I just think we need to continue to invest in basketball. It's, it's certainly something that I think in the past maybe hasn't gotten the attention it should have from our administration. And I'm certainly working with the new president and the board of trustees to make sure that we have some ideas for a new facility that are certainly going to put basketball in a, in a new light right. and a new uh, level of recruiting and all those different things that we want to see happen. I also think that position-wise, you know, like with the new strength and conditioning staff, we've had a few openings. Um, we always knew that was going to happen with the gun lock opening. Exactly. That yeah. some strength staff were going to leave this building to go down there. And so in, in this building's place here in Gross, we are going to hire a new director of strength and conditioning that is going to be focused on basketball. Right. That is going to be their priority. They're not going down to the football stadium to help football do their stuff. They are going to be in Gross all the time, dedicated to the two basketball programs. And we've never had that. Right. You know, basketball's never had a strength coach just designated to them. And that's an important piece of, like I said, continuing to invest in basketball, hire more resources, more, more folks that can help touch that program in a positive way and I think Coop and Cleve are appreciative of those things right. and I think we have to continue to find ways to strategically invest in basketball while also just telling the staff and everyone else that we have to work harder at it right. and make it a priority. Yeah, uh, One of the biggest topics seems to always, at least every other year or so, be expansion. Big 12 is the topic uh, for most of that right now and of course everybody kind of watching to see where dominoes fall and that sort of stuff. Uh, we will go with uh, the question uh, from, uh, let me get it right, Chuck Walker sent it in. Uh, are Miami and the Mid-American Conference number one monitoring the Big 12 expansion and what impacts to the UC series do you see if UC should happen to go to the Big 12? I'll start with the UC series first. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're contracted through 2020 right now, so really nothing should change there. And in fact, we, we actually, as 
a little ago as last week, met with Mike Bone, the athletic director, at a neutral site location. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't divulge the location, but we met and talked about extending the contract for four more years, and he's very open to that. And so I think that series looks like it's going to continue, okay. regardless of what goes on there. At least I, that's my hope. I certainly don't want to be the one to end that series right, in the right. long history that it has. So we're very committed to it. Even looking at maybe playing at Paul Brown every now and then, very good. Uh, yeah. which I think would be a great opportunity and a great, great situation for both programs. And so that's going to continue. I think the Big 12 talk and is the MAC monitoring it, absolutely. Oh, you know. The MAC is monitoring it very closely. We all are. Um, I don't think that there's really any Big 12 issues with MAC schools going to the Big 12. Right. The, the issue is the trickle down if the American Athletic Conference lost some schools and who would they backfill from and would the MAC lose some schools. And, and I don't know that I've heard a whole lot of chatter about that, but some. Yeah. And so we'll continue to monitor that. We are not in any discussions with the Big 12. Let's right, just be right. clear on that. Um, and I think we're all are hoping the MAC stays the stable conference that it is. Uh, I think we're in a really good position TV-wise right now mm -hmm. to m have all of our schools do better. Um, and I'm not sure expansion is going to happen at all. Right. So there's a lot of rumblings, two, four. I also have heard a lot that there might not be any expansion. And it's just simply a, a game of chicken trying to get more television money from ESPN and Fox. So we'll see which way it unfolds. Uh, I don't know that there's going to be any quick resolution to it. Mm -hmm which makes it harder because it just kind of prolongs looking at it, thinking about it. But I'm kind of under the assumption right now that there might be nothing that happens and we're just going to continue to kind of have business as normal. Stay tuned. We'll uh, obviously be finding out in the coming weeks here. And speaking of the coming weeks, uh, football camp uh, going on, obviously less than two weeks away from the start of the season in Iowa. And uh, just going into this season, not only just with football, but field hockey picked to win, volleyball was just picked to win the conference. It's going to be an exciting year for Miami Athletics. Yeah, you can feel it. I mean, just the Pigskin preview the other day, I felt yeah. a lot of optimism, a lot of um, enthusiasm about where we're going. And I think internally with our student athletes, they have that same sense of enthusiasm about the direction of our programs. And I certainly, that you can feel it as far as the intensity picking up around here, right, right. right, getting closer to the season. But I know that those teams are real excited about being picked and looking forward to, you know, matching those expectations and all of our programs. Soccer's off and running. And I just, I feel like there's a lot of good things coming this fall for Miami. David, thank you so much. Thank you. That's this edition of Ask the AD. As always, thank you for your questions and thank you for watching here on MiamiRedHawks.com.